Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since we've had an update, but life has just got in the way. Um, as you'll see, the Mini's all jacked up. Uh, we've only recently bought it, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, we've just been on holiday to the Disneyland. Well, I didn't test drive the Mini when we had a look at it. Uh, the wife test drived it because the Mini's for her. Um, and she loved it and she couldn't find anything wrong with it. But I've been driving it around for the last week or so and it's got a mad misfire. It's like a mad rough running. Uh, anything below 2000 RPM, but anything above that, it runs sweet. So uh, I got my uh, best mate Stu up. Uh, he's got like a snap on Solace unit so we can go live, so live data. Um, got him to plug it in, see if there's any misfire faults. No faults on the misfires. Um, it had recently had spark plugs and coil packs. Uh, recently uh, in the service history, you know, like invoices and stuff that I found. So yeah, so um, he went live data, uh, we drove it around the block uh, and he said quite a few of the injectors were very spiky. Um, you know, like um, the way they wave, the, wave uh, the amount of fuel they're throwing in, the amount of fuel coming out. So he went live with the Lambda sensor and he said uh, the Lambda sensor was working. Um, it's just what, what the car was doing itself. So he, he, he reckoned, um, let's pull the injectors out and let's clean them. So if any of us have ever worked on a N14 Mini Cooper S, um, to pull the injectors out, you have to pull the inlet off. So uh, about five days ago, uh, I pulled the inlet off. It took me about an hour and a half to get off. Absolutely twat of a job to work on. These are horrible to work on, these minis. Uh, pulled the inlet off, pulled the injectors out, and why I had the inlet off, I had a quick look down the inlet, and they were absolutely disgusting. Full of carbon buildup, uh, all down the inlet and on all the valves. Uh, cylinder free looked like to be the worst, but they were all absolutely horrendous. So um, yeah, so uh, I got back to the, got back in touch with the garage um, to see what he had to say. Uh, we did buy the car with warranty, but we did buy it extremely cheap. Uh, and he theoretically just fucked me off. Um, so that just goes to tell you that uh, all, not all warranties are any good. Uh, when I had warranty with the Range Rover, that was absolutely awesome, and he sorted, it, sorted the issues out I had with that. Uh, this guy didn't want to know, um, but because we bought it from so far away, I just can't be asked with the hassle, and because the car's so cheap, I thought I'll just get involved and we'll do it, do it ourselves. So uh, I happened to speak to a good friend in work who's got one of these, uh, Andy Dowser, awesome super clever lad uh, and he said when he first bought his five years ago um there's a thing that these have carbon build up on the inlets and that he's worn up blasted his himself so i had a quick look because i don't really have a lot of time with the family I had a quick look on the internet and we're looking at around uh, approximately between three and four hundred pounds to get it done by a company you know driving drive out service um and i didn't really want to throw that at like a couple of grand car so yeah, I thought we'd have a go ourselves, bit of DIY. Uh, if Andy Dowser can do it, um, so can we. So I've borrowed all the bits from Andy Dowser and I've bought uh, three kilograms of crushed walnuts off eBay and we're gonna give it a whirl. So let's get over there and, and uh, I thought I'd do a little video, bit of interest with you. Um, but yeah, yet again, we've been scammed. We got scammed with the Mini, you know what I mean? He blatantly must have known that it was rough running, that's why he put plugs and, and, and uh, coil packs in it. But uh, as I say, the wife probably just seen it, liked it, and when she was driving, she didn't realize that it that it drove so so rough at low, low speeds, you know what I mean? Um, so let's get cracking. So to make sure which valves were fully closed and which are were open, uh, the easiest way I thought was to remove the rocker cover and you can see which lobes are activating the rockers or not. Got the hoover set up, compressor set up, bin full of walnut. Bought a three kilo bag, so I'm hoping that'll do enough. And then this is our 3D printing parts with the gun, the walnut blasting gun. So, so this is a before clip. You can see how bad the uh, the carbon is on top of the valves.
is um, I've got Andy Dowser's uh, 3D printed pieces. These are spot on. Such a clever lad, like. Um, 3D printed pieces. I noticed on eBay you can actually buy these. Um, but uh, he's made his own design, 3D printed them. Um, you have to bring the cylinder to a uh, top dead centre so you know that the valves are closed, both inlet valves are closed. What I've done is I lifted the rocker cover off and I could see on the cam when the lobe <coughs> was completely off the valve. So I know the valves will be completely shut. The idea is so you don't get, get any walnut, um, crushed walnut in the cylinder. Um, and then I've duct taped all the rest of the ports up because um, some of the other ports, the valves will be open, so stuff could go in it. I've uh, duct taped the uh, intercooler pipe and the uh, turbo inlet and the cold air feed inlet and this breather. Any open orifices that I had to remove to get the inlet out, I've duct taped up just so, because even though we're using a hoover, we've got the walnut blasting through this gun, even though we're going to put a hoover attachment on this, it still seems to be messy and it still does seem to get everywhere. So just so no walnut goes into the places we don't want. Uh, that's what I've done. So you'll have to excuse any noise because the compressor will be kicking in and out. Uh, I've got the compressor because it's only a little baby one uh, set as as much PSI as I possibly can. Uh, I think we're looking at eight, eight bar, eight bar one on, on the reg. So um, yeah, the idea is to blast this with having the Hoover attachment on this piece. We'll blast the walnut down and move it round as much as we can. Um, you only have to do it for a, like a couple of, well, I'd say maybe like 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds, and then we'll take it off and have a quick look, blow it out, have a quick look. So let's get cracking out. wiggle it that way and concentrate on that inlet valve now. Remove the 3D printed piece with the gun. Oh. Trying to keep the uh, duct tape where I need it to be on all the inlet, all the inlet. So. And then I'll blow it out with the uh, little blower gun. With my little blower gun. Makes some horrendous for losing things, me. There it is. Little blower gun with the Hoover on. Let's 
So you can still, you can even see the shininess on the valve there. So this is um, what we ended up with uh, after we blasted all the eight valves. So just took the car out for a spin and it drives great, it drives awesome. It's not 100%, but I've got a fuel filter to try and uh, there's always the lamber sensor to change, isn't it? So yeah, it drives, uh, it drives to, I'd say about 80, 90% better. So it was well worthwhile doing the, um, the warm-up blasting. So it's just a little video, just to give you a little insight of warm-up blasting and how easy it is to get conned. Everyone, everyone's, you know what I mean? Everyone's honest, except car salesmen. So always remember that. Alright guys, we've seen a new uh, the new number plate of both our series, it's awesome isn't it? Susie, yeah I love it like. So alright guys, please um, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. You take it easy. Later. Are you rooted? Please like and subscribe.